All right, we've got one package that arrived today. Three other things inside, but let's uh, just begin by opening this. Here's the little tab down here. Uh, this just came off, so we can peel it. Being, it's giving more resistance than usual, so I guess they've improved the underlying adhesive. Let's see, I'll just spill these out onto here just like that. Nice and simple. I wasn't expecting something that big, but I can see why I got it. Let's see, I also had two other things arrive. And then uh, one non anime thing, which would be. Uh, the Lord of the Rings Extended Edition Motion Picture Trilogy. Nothing complicated here, but it is a pretty nice, simple... <laughs> the camera's face identification thing is identifying their faces. Pretty clever of it. I'll talk about that, of course, uh, or rather why I have that later. For now, let's go ahead and begin with these anime. Beginning with... Uh, the Eccentric Family, which I remember actually seeing being released on Blu-ray in Japan with English subtitles. I didn't get it because those seem like a really easy way to just completely drain your bank account. Or rather by you, I mean me. So one thing to note about this is this is an NISA release. See, NIS of America. <clears throat> and, um... It's I'm pretty sure it said somewhere around here. Like, it says here, this is definitely the premium edition. So as you can see, NIS is doing a different shape for their premium editions. When we get into the inside like this, we've got a pretty stereotypical insert. We got we see the usual shape there, and I've already got that, but it looks like for upcoming Genshikin release, it's going to be just like this. And the handbook is... Uh, Somewhat more normally shaped. But the contents look pretty much the same. Don't know what to think about it. It is what it is. <clears throat> and now let's see. I guess one was on the top. Take a look in here. First of all, we've got a nice background. This one has the first nine episodes on it. see here that says what they are on the back and then we've got <coughs> disc two here which uh, oh yeah there is only disc two which has episodes 10 through 13 let's do that to take a nice look at this background it looks like it's invertible Bonus features, Japanese TV spots, original Japanese trailers, clean opening and ending, so the usual. Put these back in the order they were, and let's see. Down here, it says Region A. Otherwise, it's an NIS release, so we wouldn't expect a dub. <clears throat> Next up, the DVD version of No Known Biori arrived. Uh, you may recall the Blu-ray version arrived last week. I'm not sure that there's anything to comment about content-wise. It does have two discs instead of the, only the one in the Blu-ray version. Pretty straightforward. We got the Blu-ray release of Amagami SS Plus. Did I have the Blu-ray version of Amagami? I'll have to double-check that. I do believe this is a completely new. There's no dub to this. All 13 episodes on two discs. Oh, well, I'll figure it out off camera. Probably nothing too notable. Region A, Japanese English subtitles, straightforward. 
We've got One Piece Season 6 Voyage 3. Nice. We get to continue on with this. It's my understanding that regarding the contents of this season that it's an okay season, but it gets really good after this I'm hearing. Which I have to say I'm looking forward to. So let's see. They say discs one and two. We have had one that only said disc one and disc one on the side. And then of course we've got season six, voyage three, disc one. One and disc two. Excellent. Next up, we've got Fantastic Detective Labyrinth. I was wondering what this was. I had trouble telling from the back. It actually feels heavy, so I'm guessing there's a number of discs in it. This is a Lucky Penny. So this is a Right Stuff release. That makes sense. And just like Right Stuff stuff, they do have the sticker on the top still. Just wondering why this camera... Whether or not it said it was recording. It's still pretty new to me, so hard to be sure sometimes. There's nothing underneath that. It's a curious looking series. Hmm. I'll I'll know more what to think about that one once I um have a chance to watch it. Next up is uh a certain magical index the movie and I think maybe somebody mentioned on um, the anime the anime subreddit on reddit that maybe this had bit come out before something else that may be coming out index and railgun related so I'll have to look that up but I'm not in any particularly big rush Okay, for a while there, I didn't see this blue disc in here. Let's see, we've got... Image on the background. Pretty standard for Funimation. This is the DVD version. And here's the Blu-ray version. It makes sense, the blue disc is Blu-ray, right? According to the back, this is Region A only. So anybody hoping to import it, unfortunately, there just don't seem to be any more of those. It seemed like they were everywhere left and right. Not anymore. And then we got this. This was the big thing that I wasn't quite sure what it was. And this is Yu-Gi-Oh! 5DS. 5Ds. Includes all 64 episodes of the first season. So that's why it's so big. See on the side, it's got a little image to it. I do like how these Yu-Gi-Oh! These flat iron Yu-Gi-Oh! releases have been uh, graphical in that way. I'm, I'm not quite sure, though, where 5DS, um, how that relates to everything else Yu-Gi-Oh! related. I really ought to watch it sometime. It is a staple, I guess. A classic A. I, I guess staple isn't the right word. It's just, this was many people's, well, not 5DS in particular, but Yu-Gi-Oh! was many people's childhoods. And sometimes it's kind of nice to know... To just know that sort of stuff related. Hmm. I was wondering if the character design was reminding me of something else. This feels weird for some reason. Might not be bad. Oh. We'll just finish up real quickly here because there's just these couple things left. Hmm. Have I been looking at the back of these? I guess I did. Alright then. So, that's this week's anime DVD collection update. Pretty good update. So, I haven't really watched a whole lot of stuff this past week. I think it mostly comes down to uh, the Elgato 
video game capture. I think it's simple. It's got HDMI in, HDMI out. It's an HDMI pass-through, and the basic idea is it's a lot like my old Hopodge 1212, except it's specifically for HDMI as opposed to component and composite. Now, I, this isn't their newest model. I went for their slightly older one because the audio video plug here is uh, for component and uh, optionally composite. It's a bit like most TVs in that regard. But the point is, um, you know, I got this and I have been playing around with it a lot. And then, of course, there's Minecraft and just projects to build roads everywhere. So um, it's been very time consuming which means I haven't watched as much. I mean, there were a couple of one-off things, such as 2001 A Space Odyssey, which actually this time, it just struck me how Stanley Kubrick it was. Like, it, I, 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 I sometimes don't capture specific directors' styles, and this time it just suddenly clicked. I, th I think it, watching A Clockwork Orange helped in that regard. But... Now that was that, but really, I guess when we get down to it, there are three main things to talk about here, and those would be Nanan -Nan Biori, Dog and Scissors, and Lord of the Rings stuff. Let's begin with the Nanan -Nan Biori. Basically, um, it, it was a very nice watch. Uh, I, I was thinking it would probably be more comedy, and comedy is definitely an important element to it. But it's a slice of life for sure, and it's a very nice slice of life. I'm not sure what it is about these um, out in the country slice of life animes, at least, where they don't feel like they need to force things on you, I guess. I've mentioned this before, and I think A Place to Place, where I could kind of feel, starting watching it, how it felt like the characters were created for me to observe them, but for some reason with Nonon Biori that wasn't the case. And I know in the case of no, no, uh, I guess part of what really helped was, I mean, I mean de definitely, the thing about the country anime is they kind of like to show off some of the calmness and quietness of country sort of stuff, so you can just sort of take things in, be pretty relaxed about it. And Donald Biori, I think related to the feeling of the characters, it begins but with some of that stuff leading up to a character making an amusing observation, I suppose. Or rather, asking an interesting question. It's the kind of thing where it hooks you in and just gets you really interested in the character themselves. And beyond that, I feel like their eccentricities were not too extreme in any regard. They were just something that built up. And that could be the sort of thing where I I think A Channel is another anime like this where I kind of felt this disconnect at the very beginning of it. Or maybe it feels like the characters are definitely eccentric. And I'm not sure why something like Love Electra and, and Chocolate did because that one kind of begins sort of suddenly too. But it could be that that one knows it's just introducing the character to this random stuff and maybe the characters blend together a little bit more in that one? I don't know. There's a lot you can really speculate about in this stuff. But overall, I found Nun Nun Biori to be enjoyable to watch. In fact, uh, by the time we got to the final episode, I was thinking, oh, is this setting up for um, some sort of season finale or is it the end of an episode or something, sort of? We're basically... Well, I guess I didn't think I was, it was setting up some sort of season finale so much as I thought it was a prelude to something happening, a calm before the storm sort of thing, where you can kind of feel the series was getting close to its end, even if you didn't know that. In my case, I didn't know that because I had the Blu-ray in, and because there's only the one disc, and I'm used to switching through discs, um, I, I basically lost track of how far in the series I was quite early into it. Now, it's subtitled only, which meant that it was tricky to juggle this in Minecraft, and that's why 
Minecraft ate up so much of my um, watching time, I think. It's all hypothesis at this point. So the timing to watch Dog and Scissors was better now since it was dubbed. I mean, unlike uh, Chinibio, I watched that one even though it was subtitled only, but a dub should be coming out. In fact, I think there was an advertisement for it on this Blu-ray, making it a lot more like a Funimation Blu-ray almost. I didn't see if it was skippable or not. But you know how Funimation DVDs and Blu-rays tend to have that unskippable preview at the beginning, which you can skip if you press menu or something like that, but it's still a little annoying, I guess. And that's just the way Funimation DVDs and Blu-rays are, I guess. And Sentai seems to be doing a little bit of that. They, I think it was, it was here in Dog and Scissor. They were advertising uh, that Chinibio would be coming out sometime soonish, but I don't remember the exact date. Anyways, regarding the anime itself, the timing was good now because it was dubbed, which meant that I could just dig simple roads in Minecraft while watching this, and I'm not sure what to think about it. It's... It's very strange. There's... Uh, as y'all may recall, I'm not a big fan of anime yet that just think it's simply funny to torture a person. Usually because they're just torturing a guy, and I think people need to be a bit more sensitive about guys being people too. Sometimes it seems like people forget it with prison rape jokes and whatnot, but this anime was definitely along those lines, but I have trouble telling if it crossed over the line and uncomfortable, if it was being s cleverly subverted. Basically, the main character gets turned into a dog in the first episode, and she likes to cut people with her scissors, including him. And so that's the thing, is she's doing it to him while he's a dog, and I can't help but wonder if that's actually supposed to be really clever or just really depraved. That, that's the difference I'm, I'm having trouble telling. And this goes back to the kick the dog trope. If you're not familiar with TV tropes, never go there if you value your time. Otherwise, you'll just go there and start clicking links. And then eventually, you'll say, fuck it, I have three dozen tabs opened up. I'm not making this any smaller. I need to stop opening new tabs. And so eventually, three or four hours later, you'll finally wander away from TV tropes. But the point is, they try and identify these common themes. And the kick the dog trope is... An interesting one. We're basically um, it this the the it, it, it's about setting up bad guys essentially, and the idea is that in a comic book you might have a villain that they want you the reader to know they're a real bad person that you're supposed to hate, and the way they do it is they have this villain kick a dog because it's an innocent dog. Now of course they could. It could be a really vicious dog, and they're like, oh, kick it, you know, maybe a Resident Evil dog or something like that. But the entire point is that you're supposed to understand this person will attack an innocent dog, so we should hate them. And it doesn't actually have to be a dog. It's just the name of the trope. It could be something else. Little kids may be a real good example. If you have a perfectly innocent kid and somebody comes up and steals candy from them, then, you know... They're a bad person. They don't care about the well-being of these kids. That's a kick the dog moment. And dog and sisters, of course, since the main character is attacking a dog, I have to wonder, are we supposed to think, geez, she's a really bad person? And I don't think it does that, but at the same time, that could be the entire purpose of it, where we're supposed to realize we should be thinking that about her, and we don't. And I don't know. It's tricky to say. As for the content of the series, it seemed okay. It just didn't feel like there was much purpose to much of it beyond the first couple of episodes, I guess. I mean, there's some things that happen that are interesting and noteworthy, but you kind of finish the series thinking stuff happened. I don't, I don't think it's really as bad as it's rated, so much as it's not just not better, I guess. It, it seemed perfectly watchable, just nothing about it that would leave a real lasting impression. Even this whole thing I told you about, you know, I don't like it when main they, they set up the main character just be endlessly tortured by people and we're supposed to laugh because he's tortured. And it 
didn't even seem strong in that regard. So, strange show, not bad, but nothing that will kind of... This is probably not going to change the industry in any way, shape, or form. Okay, the story for why I got this is probably not what you would guess. Your guess would probably be that I watched the third Hobbit movie in theaters and wanted to watch it. The truth of the matter is I watched the first one and I kind of knew I wasn't going to like two and three so I just didn't bother with them. I can kind of see them making two stories out of The Hobbit, but it wasn't even just that they were making three movies instead of two. It was also... You can kind of tell they were trying, just trying to make Lord of the Rings 2 or 0 or something like that, as opposed to The Hobbit. And so what really got me into Lord of the Rings recently was I watched the old Rankin-Bass ones. And the old Rankin-Bass Hobbit is pretty nice. It could just be about twice as long so that you get more character interaction development and whatnot. But outside of that, I don't think I... I I, I'm, I'm just going to skip over the Peter Jackson Hobbit stuff if I try and introduce anybody to Lord of the Rings. And my goal would instead be to show them the Rankin-Bass one and then just let to let them know that there's different interpretations of how Gollum looks, etc. And then I would move on to this. Now, I moved on to this because you've watched the old Rankin-Bass Hobbit and you follow up and you watch the old Rankin-Bass Return of the King. And the, while there's neat things about their version of Return of the King, I really like the music, of course. It's very catchy and earwormy. Um, there is the issue with it where they're kind of trying to tell the whole story of the Lord of the Rings from the middle of a point in the final third of the story. It's actually, technically the final sixth, maybe? It, it, it's really late in the game, and... It just doesn't convey some things very well about it. It doesn't convey most things about Lord of the Rings very well. And so, having watched that, I kind of felt in the mood to um, watch these. And since I've been doing some video game related stuff, and I have gone on a couple trips to... Actually, maybe just one trip to Best Buy. While I was there and looking at their DVDs and Blu-rays, I was kind of curious about this, because... Um, it would be the best way to rewatch it, especially since it's extended version. Now, I would have preferred either the DVD version or the Blu-ray and DVD version most, but beggars can't be choosers. Blu-ray version is actually pretty good because it's a pretty high-quality filmed uh, movie trilogy anyways, and watching it, I think it's a pretty good um, telling of the Lord of the Rings stuff. I'm not a big... Uh, I, I, I'm not very familiar with all the options out there, but as far as I can tell, it seems to be one of the best adaptations out there, where it has the time to do things, and even though it doesn't do everything perfectly, it leaves out some stuff and inserts some stuff. Like, a, a lot of people complained about the R1 love scenes, and re-watching it, especially the extended version, I was just kind of surprised where it's like, no, oh, you know, it's just like one scene here or there. So, it's really easy to tolerate a lot of those things. I know some people absolutely hate uh, that they leave that, left out Tom Bombadil, and I know my friend was really upset with the way they portrayed uh, Boromir, I think it was. I don't remember exactly which character. It was either Boromir or his brother, whose name I can't remember. But, you know, sometimes you go in and you have things, but when you get down to it, if I were to try to introduce this series to somebody without shoving a book at them and say, here, read this, and, you know, I don't have any copies with me, so it would be kind of rude to try and introduce them that way. You know, I could just say, hey, let's watch The Hobbit, it's like, okay, now you want to see The Lord of the Rings. This would be the trilogy I would definitely prefer. So, it's not all for a loss. Okay, so The Hobbit's not great. And I've heard from people that it's supposed to be a prequel sequel. I, it's a sequel, it's a prequel chronologically, but the three movies were directed in such a way that you can only really watch them afterwards, and that's the real problem. Is with the 
The Hobbit is just a kind of nice standalone story that happens to be an important backstory to the Lord of the Rings. I mean, there's a lot of important backstory. Like, if, if you just think about these movies, uh, if you think about, okay, what sort of stuff did Gandalf do? You might kind of think, did he really do anything that would make you say, yeah, he's a wizard? Saruman? Oh, maybe. I mean, it seems like there's not a lot portrayed there, and I think there's some backstory to Middle-earth itself that just really helps to understand um, how powerful these characters are, why they don't do much and whatnot. And I, I can't really say I'm enough of a um, Tolkien nerd to have uh, to be completely familiar with all that stuff, but I, ha I do understand some basic concepts from the Silmarillion and there may be some other sources notes from the author, but it, it'd be nice to have some of that stuff explained as well, but I don't think the original books explained those, so going into the Lord of the Rings and not having them explained is pretty good. It's sort of like if you, if you watch The Matrix, you know, they never really explain why The Matrix needed to exist within the context of the movie universe, and for things like that, I think they're pretty good in terms of maybe somebody has an answer, answer out there, but also you can kind of feel that there is sort of an answer behind the scenes. And I guess I can't talk about that Matrix one here, but for this Lord of the Rings one, when it comes to wizards, you know, there's very subtle things in that movie which kind of let you know the wizards are really damn powerful. But they also just seem to don't want to directly interact with things too much. And it's kind of neat watching and pre being able to appreciate that background information, knowing that the Silmarillion and stuff like that exists, kind of explaining why some of that stuff is, I think. Beyond that, um, I don't know. But of course, those movies are really long, and that's where what, what I did a lot of Minecrafting, where you can lose an entire day just watching one of the movies because that's all you have for your free time. So... That was, that, all three, I watched all three of those movies, so that, that's where a lot of my anime watching time went, so was just getting those done. So, to finish things up, um, it, did, it occurs to me that regarding the video game capture stuff, this is now maybe a good point to mention that uh, one of my brothers is, um, part of the reason I've got all this video capture stuff is because one of my brothers is interested in recording us playing video games. In particular, he's interested in starting out with Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, I think. And that's perfectly fine for me because I haven't played it. I didn't even know it was two players, so that would be pretty good. And I don't know how long it'll be, but eventually he'll be creating a YouTube channel, I think, that we will be uploading this stuff to. It's hard to say the exact details at the moment, but if you ever wanted to see us playing video games, we're experimenting with stuff, and I'll let y'all know when uh, the channel goes live, I guess. I'll probably put it in a comment for whichever video I mention it in. But there's absolutely no obligation to want that stuff. In fact, I'm surprised you're still here listening to this. Uh, this is something I've told people is I wouldn't watch my own channel. So, obviously, you also like something about it more than I do. For me, uploading it is just a nice part of my hobby. It stays a hobby. That's why there's no advertisements here. <sighs> Otherwise, I guess in two days I'll be ordering next month's stuff, and I'm looking forward to that. Can't think what else is coming out soon. So, I guess we'll have to end the video there. Y'all have a nice week.